So I'm going to show two examples using synthetic division and explain what types of problems this will work for and how to interpret your answer. So the only time that synthetic division can be applied is if your divisor is of the form, it has to be linear in x, so x to the first power, and the coefficient has to be a 1 as well. So it has to be a 1x, and then it can be plus or minus a number. So here's how it works. It's kind of a shortcut for a long division of polynomials. Only works sometimes, but it, when it works, it works great. So what we do is we take the numeric part of the divisor and change its sign. So take the constant and change its sign. And then we write the coefficients of the dividend. So 5x cubed, a 3 for the x squared. Notice I'm kind of leaving a little space in here. I'm going to need to use that. So don't write it right on the line. Leave yourself some space. Then the negative 7, and then the 2 constant. Okay. So once you get it set up, then it's just a process that we follow. The first thing that happens is that 5 drops down. And then we multiply in this direction. So I'll have negative 2 times 5. And then that goes up and over. And then we add going down. So 3 plus negative 10. So negative 7. And then we go again. Negative 2 times negative 7. Uh, positive 14. And we add going down. Negative 7 plus 14 is 7. And we multiply going across. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. And we add going down. So 2 plus negative 14 is negative 12. Okay. So this bottom row here is our answer. It's our quotient. Okay. So how, would, how do I turn that into a polynomial? Because when we were long dividing, I right, would get a polynomial out. Well, these are the coefficients of that polynomial. Since I started, right, this 5 was with a 5x cubed, and we divided it by an x to the first. Our first power under here goes with 1 less than what we started with. So that will be a 5x squared. And then we just go down by 1 each time. Minus 7x plus 7, and that last one is your remainder. So you can either do a minus here or a plus. I'm going to put a plus, and then it's negative 12 over that x plus 2 out in front. Okay. So let's do one more example, and this has one of the other tricks you have to be on the lookout for. So now I'm going to divide x minus 1 into x cubed minus 1. So my divisor looks good. x is raised to the first power. It has a 1 leading coefficient. So I'm going to draw that symbol upside down. Take this number, but change its sign. And now I need to write the coefficients of the dividend. But since I have missing powers of x in my dividend, I need 0 placeholders. So I will have 1x cubed, 0x squares, 0 x's, and negative 1 constant. Okay, so you have to remember your placeholders. Remember 0 placeholders. And that's if you skip a power of x in your dividend. OK, and then we just do the process. So the 1 drops down, and we multiply, and it goes up and over, and we add, coming down, 0 plus 1 is 1, and we multiply, and it goes up and over, and we add going down, and we multiply, up and over, and we add going down, and it's a 0. Okay, that had nothing to do with these zeros, but if we interpret what that means when we get a 0 out, right, so a 0 remainder, It means the same thing it meant when you did it with numbers, when you would long divide numbers. Right? If you had a zero remainder, that meant that what went in was a factor. 
and what came out was a factor. Okay. So let's go ahead and interpret just the quotient right at the end of the division. So I started with an x cubed, which means this is the coefficient of my x squared. Okay, so that's this guy, 1x squared plus 1x plus 1, no remainder. And that's the answer to the division question. Okay, but just so that you can take this one step farther, what this also means is that x cubed minus 1 can be written as the divisor times the quotient. And that is something you can check by multiplying these together and showing that you get x cubed minus 1 on the other side.